next guest is Dr. Shashi Karhel. Uh, Dr. Shashi Karhel has worked as a lead engineer with Samsung Advanced Technology Group and is currently working as cybersecurity consultant with Rimbo Secure. Being a passionate uh, cybersecurity and a uh, cloud enthusiast, Dr. Shashi enjoys sharing her technical knowledge with others and has done so. Uh, has done so. Uh, so by participating and uh, delivering expert talks on various international platforms. She is a GHC08 uh, scholar, scholar and uh, she has been awarded special commendation award by Google for making it to, to two editions of Google India Women in Engineering Award 2009 and to, uh, to, uh, 2009 to 2010 and in recognition of her academic excellence and contribution to computing and technology. Thank you, Poojan, for such a nice introduction. Welcome, ma'am. Welcome. Welcome. Hi, welcome you all to Rainbow Secure Cyber Symposium. So I'm sharing my screen. Please let me know if you're able to see it. Sure. Yes, it is visible. Is my screen visible? Yes. OK. <laughs> A very good morning to all the audiences. Thank you for joining today for our sessions. So today, my presentation talks about cloud computing for our business. I am. Uh, already, Poojan has given a brief introduction of mine, but I would like to also, <laughs> sorry, point out to my uh, um, so summarize my profile. So I'm a PhD in computer science and engineering. The topic of my thesis was interoperability and trust management solutions for establishing secure grids. I worked as a lead engineer in Samsung Research and Development, uh, whose research and development wing was Advanced Technology Group. So currently, I'm working as a cybersecurity consultant with Rainbow Secure for past two months. I have an international patent with my group on multi-factor authentication. I have received various accolades, such as recent one is Microsoft Azure Training and Certification 2021. I have received broader engagement advanced track 2011 from Supercomputing Conference, into which boarding, lodging, and traveling to US was provided. I have been uh, nominated and I have been uh, a finalist of Google India Women in Engineering Award 2009 and 2010, for which I have also got special commendation award from Google. So there were only like 20 to 50, 15 to 20 students who were like uh, selected in Google India Women in Engineering. I also got GHC Grace Hopper Women in Computing, uh, Celebration of Women in Computing 2008 Scholar Award. I also have National Overseas Fellowship Award from Ministry of Social Justice and Women Empowerment, into which only 15 students were selected from India to pursue their education in MS, PhD, or postdoc in science or related fields. The agenda for today's presentation is what is cloud computing? Why cl cloud computing? Cloud service models. We'll be talking about attributes of cloud computing. Uh, we will look into cloud deployments and we will also look at the learning path available from Microsoft and Amazon. So what is cloud computing? NIST, National Institute of Standards and Technology, defines cloud computing as a model for enabling convenient on-demand network access to shared pool of configurable con computing resources. So the resources available are usually computers, networks, and storage are the resources which are primarily used in cloud computing. They can be rapidly provisioned and released with minimal management effort. So you can um, auto scale your resources. You can um, use a template to auto scale your resources. As just Amit mentioned, in AWS, you can use uh, auto scaling feature into which you can configure a template for your uh, Amazon um, uh, AMI, which is Amazon um, machine instance, where you can configure the resources. You can release them when you don't need it. There are other definitions available from Gartner and Forrester. So the definition says that uh, cloud computing is a style of computing 
in which massively scalable IT related services, IT related services such as networking, compute, storage is available. And it is provided as a service using internet technologies to multiple external customers. Also, Forrester says that this pool of abstracted, highly scalable managed compute infrastructure capable of hosting end customer applications, and they're also built by the consumption. So what, what does a business worry about? So business worry about worries about, first of all, what is the service availability? So service availability is, <coughs> I'm sorry, it is um, at, at any point uh, in the day, 24 seven, my services should be available to the customers. It should not be that uh, there should be any downtime because as uh, you hit downtime in your business applications, so you have major losses over there. So your service should be available all the time. Second is your unpredictable user growth. Our business worries about unpredictable user growth, but it is not that uh, they worry about user growth. They, what they worry about is how they'll be able to scale their resources when the user growth at certain point of time is X and uh, within a certain point of time, it increases to 10X. So how they'll be able to scale the resources, how these services will be available to the users. The business worry about multi data center management. Let me talk about redundancy first of all. So, what is redundancy? Redundancy is that your application, your data is available at multiple locations with the help of like cloud computing provides this facility that your data is available at multiple locations. So, you don't have any downtime. So, when you have this redundancy feature available, so you need to have multi data centers also uh, at various location in multiple regions so how you'll be managing those data centers because when you don't have redundancy you'll be managing only one data center that will be on premises so what is the provisioning latency like how your services will be provisioned like uh, if there is like a increase in the user growth how the services will be provisioned to the user what will be the latency what will be the time that user will be able to access the services then the business worry about elasticity what is elasticity elasticity is that you take a rubber you stretch it when you stretch it it increases when you release it it comes back to its normal shape so elasticity your services or your um, your um, resources should be such that when you need those resources, you should be able to scale them. And when you don't re need those resources, such as servers, you should be able to scale it out because the amount of service you will be utilizing, it will be built and that will be your cost, your running cost. Businesses also worry about uh, infrastructure shortage and refresh. A business usually has to, uh, um, incur cost in buying various resources for running of the business. So a manufacturer of uh, various items like uh, you can say consumables, he should not worry about that. Today I'm going to purchase this much of hardware and after three years this hardware will be outdated. So how uh, after three years how I'll be like refreshing this particular hardware. The chain goes like never ending because uh, as you're buying that particular hardware, it will uh, wear out, it will uh, it will be outdated. So you need to refresh that hardware every, after a short amount of time. Businesses worry about data locking, that you have chosen one service provider to put all your data over there, like you are buying a car. So you have invested good amount of money in buying that particular car. So you will be utilizing that car for some time until unless you have recovered all the cost for buying that particular property. So uh, businesses worry about that after some time when uh, if I'm using the resources uh, for quite some time, so my data gets locked in. So he needs uh, facilities, he needs uh, availability of multiple um, cloud providers. Businesses also worry about, though, although the businesses worry about their core uh, business operation but one thing which is very important to them also is the confidentiality of the data how the data is stored at rest how the data is um, moving when the data is in motion how the data is being secure at that point so uh, what is the security what is the encryption policies being put on data compliance because um, 
in different regions it is uh, there are certain policies of different countries that the data should not go out of the country so the businesses have to worry about that they cannot be using data center from a different country or they have to keep even if they are using the data center from different country they have to keep their data within their own country so audit trial what audit trial does is who has done this why it has happened how this server outage has happened how uh, who was responsible for making these configuration changes so when something bad happens audit trail is one thing which comes into picture and their audit trail is being used so licensing is again businesses worry about licensing every year they have to because licensing costs keep on increasing there are three popular models service models from cloud service providers there are other models also but these are like popular ones so i'll be discussing about them so first is the software as a service model second is platform as a service model and third is infrastructure as a service model let's let's discuss about these models with an analogy from a pizza as a service so when you want to eat pizza and uh, how do you prepare a pizza if if it is made at home so you can consider the example from a, for a traditional on premises so you will be um, you need to have expertise in preparing the dough you need to have expertise in putting sauce on that toppings you need to have cheese to put on it you need to incur cost in like um, you know switching on the fire then you should have an oven to bake the pizza then uh, finally that pizza goes on your table so that is uh, your on premises traditional on premises that you have to incur cost in um incur cost in like procuring all the hardware for your company when you use infrastructure as a service so uh, what you do is that uh, you go to a market you buy a frozen pizza where the pizza dough is already prepared the sauce is al already overlaid on it the toppings are already there the cheese is already there so what you have to do you have to simply use fire oven electric gas and you simply bring it on your table and you can eat it platform as a service says that um, you sit at your home you order the uh, pizza from your favorite vendor like you order from domino's or um, uh, pizza hut you order the pizza and the pizza is available to you you don't have to think about the expertise of baking the pizza for preparing the pizza you need not to have that expertise software as a service says you could dine out you go to some place and you simply dine out so you don't have to bother about maintaining anything so traditional on premises says that you will be maintaining you will be taking care of networking on top of its uh, storage then servers you'll be taking care of on on top of it the hardware os the virtualization the runtime the applications you'll be taking care of everything but when you say uh, infrastructure as a service so till the virtualization part the vendor takes care of uh, maintaining uh, the infrastructure platform as a service gives you a runtime facility available to you into which you just simply have to work on your application you need not to think about how it will be managed at the lower levels it will it can be taken care of software as a service simply says that what you do is you simply utilize the service and how you utilize the service you simply log into gmail and you use the gmail so this is a survey available from Gartner. Gartner says um, that as of July 2021, Amazon Web Services is leading the market in like providing cloud services. Microsoft is also gaining momentum with 51% increase in their service providing um, from last two, three years. Google is also catching up. Then Alibaba, they have put in the visionaries and other niche players like Oracle, Tencent Cloud, and IBM are still catching up. So um, Amazon has the maximum market share in providing like cloud services. What are the attributes of cloud computing? You have number of service providers available in the market. So how do you choose how uh, which cloud provider you should be going to? So the choice of the cloud provider, like. Um, you, you can think about uh, going to Amazon, Microsoft, Google, or other cloud providers. So you should have a choice available with you to choose the cloud provider. There should be no monopoly. So just because there are so many players in the market, so you will be able to choose one of the best cloud providers according to the services being provided. Agility says 
that the business is all about velocity so you should you should have no procurement time you should not uh, write you know the requirement that today i need servers and tomorrow it goes to the team that they'll be um, you know product, um, the team will be focusing on like um, putting the invoice and then be procuring the uh, items and then it will be delivered to you so agility says that it should be available on demand it should be self serve you should be able to configure it resource pooling is for example i i'm a car rental company i have a uh, hundred of car available to me and i have to uh, if i have only one uh, customer with me and i am dependent on the customer that whenever the customer will come then only i'll be you know uh, renting my car so my car so will lie you know uh, in the garage and having dust on them so resource pooling says that uh, the cloud providers have number of resources available to them and then they have number of customers so it says economies of scale you have number of customers so that's why you are able to reduce the price of those resources admin and monitoring uh, takes care of uh, creating logs and taking care of how the services are being generated how the services are being used for billing purposes in future because there are number of departments in a in industry in company which are using cloud services so core data center services uh, literally uh, today it focuses on network it focuses on a compute it focuses on storage right now managed services are the services available from um, cloud service providers cloud providers they have uh, whenever you feel like okay this is this is um, uh, as just amit also mentioned it amit said that uh, we take you know uh, requirements from the user we simply ask the user uh, what kind of requirements you have and we create a service for that so that kind of managed services are available from various cloud providers and again the market leader is amazon in it so we should have resilient elastic and subscription based model it should be resilient uh, because there is no time for uh, there is no time for downtime it should be elastic when i require the resources it should be available to me when i want to release the resources i should be able to do it without any management intervention it's a subscription based model because whatever services i may be utilizing i have to pay for those those particular services it's a, it's a pay as you go model <coughs> for uh, sorry what are cloud deployments so public cloud is like when you talk about um, amazon google microsoft though they have the cloud which is available uh, it's not it's not publicly available to you but it is that they are providing their data center services to you uh, on a internet base but also there is one feature of uh, private cloud and public cloud which says that for financial institution which worry a lot about data how to secure the data so they'll be providing um, like there are rack of service so onto those servers onto that particular rack so they have like dedicated service given to financial institutions where no there's no shared uh, you know resources available to the users so they have dedicated service they have dedicated lines available they have uh, virtual private network available to them and they have like direct connect from amazon available to them for they um, bypass this internet connection and they directly connect to the uh, data center the public cloud and they can access the resources so private cloud is like which is usually hosted in one particular company one particular industry so only the users of that particular industry are making use of that cloud so that is a private cloud deployment so community is number of people come together and they they are ready not to step on each other and ready to use some services as a cloud uh, a community cloud hybrid cloud is when you are making use of on premises uh, you are storing your data onto your own on premises uh, and you are also utilizing public cloud for maybe accessing web application services so that is a hybrid which is the latest um, buzzword in the industry i would like to discuss uh, amazon learning path over here so there are like uh, four learning path available from amazon first is a cloud practitioner cloud practitioner um, it has like um, you need to pass on like um, introductory it's an introductory level exam where you need to pass like 
technical skills uh, you need to go ahead with training of technical skills and then you need to pass exam of uh, cloud practitioner which is a basic one then you have cloud solution architect exam which is associate level and uh, which is also professional and associate level depending on like first you'll be passing the associate level and then uh, for architecting purpose and aws you'll be going ahead with professional architect level exam so cloud devops is again associate and professional level of exam cloud operation has a sysops um, examination available to you so you'll be um, it is usually for it guys who want to um, try their hands in aws so it is for those people then we have a Microsoft learning path available. What you do is you log into this cloudsociety.microsoft.com where they'll ask you which role you are interested in. In Amazon also, there are other roles available of uh, data scientist, um, machine learning, artificial intelligence. If you want to go ahead with those roles, you can also go ahead with those roles. In Microsoft, this learning path available says, asks you like, uh, would you like to join as an administrator, a solutions architect, a security engineer, a functional consultant? When you click on the option, they will show number of options available to you, which you have to pass the foundation exam, and then you can go ahead with uh, specializing in that particular field. Am I going very fast? No. So there are other resources available from, um, there are communities available. First community is Women in Cloud, which is like providing Microsoft Azure training and certification scholarships, which I, I fortunately have won. So also I am part of AWS she builds cloud you cloud practitioner exam into which it's a developer learning path available uh, to um, women especially it's an eight week program which is a self learning and also there are like course material and uh, lectures available and also they have a slack community so you can be part of it you can uh, learn and then you can give a cloud practitioner exam which is um, $100 and that also the fees is waived off for the people who are participating in this. These are the references which I have uh, used throughout my slides. So thank you very much. Any questions? Thank you, Sashimim. That was a wonderful presentation. And uh, you also mentioned about uh, how they can get the resources if they want to study more, and that would be a great. Thank you, Mark. Yes, yes uh, yeah, really uh, nice, uh, you know, uh, with, with presentation and explanation. You nicely explained the different aspects uh, of uh, cloud computing, different uh, options and models available. So that you know, business uh, or the stakeholders who are making a decision, they can get better idea what they are going into. This is also going to be helpful to somebody who is just uh, stepping into the career for the cloud computing. Uh, you know, so definitely a good presentation. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Dehelma. Welcome. So we have a couple of comments from our audience. Very great example very helpful presentation and uh, also there is some like a very good compliment uh, com and knowledge we love your presentation yeah yeah thank you so yeah. much thank you for the comments yeah they really liked it yeah 